dear friends in this session let's discuss some of the time tested strategies and ideas for the university examination particularly for uh, the subject surgery let's discuss under uh, three broad side headings that is how to prepare for theory examination and then for practical examination and for viva examination okay so each query is its own importance and weightage so uh, how to read how to revise and what are the common mistakes uh, to be avoided uh, and what are the common cases in the practical examination uh, how to present ourselves and uh, how to especially uh, impress the examiner in practical as well as in viva all those things we will be briefly uh, discussing coming to the theory uh, now that uh, maybe one month is remaining for the final examination so almost uh, the entire year uh, you would have read the subject just before the examination or one month before the examination don't go to change the books uh, earlier you might have read uh, one book now just before the examination don't go to change uh, some other book uh, listening to someone whichever book you have read that's good enough okay just revise the same book again and again that will uh, fetch you more uh, mark or better memory than uh, reading some other books uh, just before the examination okay so choose any book of your choice revise it repeatedly that's what is important so how to revise uh, one month before the examination uh, how to study how to make a study pattern and how to uh, make a time table of its own so now that you have four subjects to read in uh, fourth year and uh, you have one month time okay either you can divide that uh, time into uh, three 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 days uh, for the first revision and then two two days for the second revision or the other way is each day three hours each for uh, uh, every subject so to uh, three into four 12 hours a day you will be studying all the four major subjects that's another way of studying so whichever is convenient for you whichever is suitable for you please follow the same but you should be able to complete the entire subject you should be able to revise at least twice at least twice you should be able to revise this within this one month uh, period uh, and uh, time uh, use the uh, time judiciously and make the best uh, use of this uh, whatever the last minute uh, uh, revision is possible coming to the notes uh, i am not a great uh, fan of uh, note making instead what you can do is in the textbook itself you can highlight the important words or important sentences you can highlight or underline or if you read from some other books you can just jot it down in the in any one book okay if you have some uh, refer some other book for any important topics or the extra points given in those books or any uh, from videos or anywhere you can jot it down in one book so that it will be easy for the uh, last minute revision what are the important topics in surgery uh, please before starting your revision please go through the previous year uh, uh, question papers last 7 8 years it is uh, available in the, most of the university websites so please download them and look at the pattern of questions how they have been asking usually the examiners mindset is to ask the important questions only they rarely ask the uh, rare questions or rare topics so pick up those important topics uh, from your uh, university question papers and mark them in the beginning itself uh, in your te uh, textbook these are the important ones and give more importance to those topics okay you have to cover the entire book no doubt about that but give more uh, time or uh, more importance to uh, these topics while reading and how to write or uh, how to read how to revise so pattern what i suggest you is while revising is in fact it should have been done during the first study itself but if you are not done still now during first revision what you can do is for example now you know that uh, from a question paper or from your teachers you know that uh, take uh, any one important question uh, for example gerd gastro esophageal reflux uh, disease okay so now this is a important uh, 10 marker for your uh, university examination how to prepare for this for any 10 marker you should have 10 points okay 10 keywords or 10 sentences should be there uh, for this 10 marker question so while studying itself from a book uh, make uh, from the one point point number one is definition definition in the book underline that key word or one particular one small sentence just underline that or he highlight the definition okay or and mark it as over that just a highlighted point give a number uh, number is one 
there. Next, uh, from the to entire topic you read, and uh, etiology is the second point, maybe. Etiology is a side reading. Two or three important etiologies you just highlight or mark and number it as entire thing as two. Next is clinical features. Okay. So, mark the most uh, cardinal features of a GERD and highlight them and mark them as three. Similarly, uh, fourth one is maybe the complications of GERD, mark them four, and uh, how to, what are the investigations, fifth, uh, medical management, six, surgical management, seven. Okay. So, like this, 10 points you should be uh, able to make for a 10 marker question. And uh, you have highlighted only 10 words. Okay, or 10 keywords you have highlighted during the revision quickly when you have to glance through the entire book, you'll be going through the only those 10 points. So hardly it will take uh, 30 seconds to, to cover each each topic. Okay, so when you uh, look at the GERD just uh, the previous day of examination, only your eyes go through that highlighted words, 10 words. Okay, whatever is there. So three, four pages, you can finish it in 30 seconds. So your revision is so, so fast. And the advantage of this numbering is when you sit in the exam hall, you will be recollected in the same order or same manner. Okay. So that uh, important point side endings will not be missed. So first point was okay. Definition second was etiology. So in that way itself, if you are missing out something, if you're not getting 10 points means you can make out that you have missed some important thing. So, and uh, what the examiner is looking for is those keywords only and uh, keywords right at the uh, beginning. And then you can frame your sentences of your own. Nobody have to teach uh, that uh, to you how to make up uh, sentences or how to elaborate it, right? So this is how even for a five marker, for example, uh, give any example for a uh, five marker upper GA bleeding, okay? Because uh, upper GA bleeding, uh, when you're reading upper GA bleeding, uh, make five points out of it, okay? Upper GA bleeding. Uh, first one, maybe what's the definition? Uh, number one uh, uh, definition of upper GA bleeding. Two is uh, important causes, okay? Causes. Third thing is uh, medical management. Fourth thing, surgical management. Fifth thing is any complications. So five points for five marker. Okay, if you prepare like this, the revision is so fast and so clear, and uh, there will be no tension uh, or time constraint. Just uh, the previous day of or previous night of the examination, you can around say two three times. You can glance through the entire book so that you will also feel comfortable and uh, uh, reassured. Okay, that you have revised multiple times. This should be your uh, approach and attitude uh, while uh, revising. And uh, while writing also, while writing, the most important thing is first look at the entire question paper first, the entire question paper, and uh, analyze uh, under what headings you are going to write the answer. Okay, beforehand you have to uh, make a mind map. Yeah, okay. So that what happens otherwise, usually the examiner would have asked in particular subheadings to write the answer, but sometimes they would have given in the very broad uh, like upper GA bleeding that uh, uh, there is a question. So how to write? Make a uh, template in your mind the before starting itself. Okay, I'm going to write about upper GA bleeding under four headings. That is definition. This, 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 is this. Okay. So what happens when you write uh, after uh, like prior planning? You have written all the what are given uh, four pages you have completed, and now you suddenly recollect that oh I have missed that important uh, subheading. Then there is no space to write. So this this should not happen. So beforehand plan your outline and write accordingly. That's the one thing. Second thing is importantly, uh, uh, equally important is time management. How to manage time uh, in the examination? Okay, that is a, uh, for example, now uh, you are writing for 100 marks in 180 minutes, correct? Three hours. So for a 10 mark, how much time you have? That is 18 minutes. The maximum of 18 minutes you have. Maximum you can take up to 20 minutes. Up, okay, 18 to 20 minutes. For five marker, how much you have is nine minutes. So nine to 10 minutes you can take for a short essay. So similarly, you can't exceed more than 20 minutes for a long essay. That's a time frame. If you're exceeding, that means skip it, leave enough uh, page gap and go for the next question. At the end, if you uh, the time permits, you can uh, come back and uh, write it. Uh, okay. So make, uh, make this a habit. Uh, you keep a time strictly follow that maximum of 20 minutes for a long uh, question. Five minutes for okay this should be or else what happens uh you know first question very well and you keep on writing 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 and uh how much are you write you will get maximum seven or eight marks and it will so happen that you would have known the last question three marker very well all the questions but you didn't get time to attempt them 
okay and uh, those are the uh, like uh, mark fetching one and uh, you are not able to attempt them that will be a big blunder so it should not happen like that so you should have enough time equally spaced for all the questions and you should be able to attempt all the questions so manage the time uh, wisely and what are the common mistakes done uh, during the theory preparation and while uh, 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 writing in the examination okay one thing is that while preparing uh, you do not uh, cover the important topics that's one common mistake what we all do okay and uh, there is nothing like out of syllabus in uh, especially in fourth year in surgery there is nothing like you cannot answer any question whatever is asked you can write something from your previous knowledge if you not read in surgery as such you can from your previous anatomy knowledge from uh, physiology from uh, pathology for example appendicitis is asked okay uh, and you have not read anything about appendicitis still you can write one two lines about the anatomy of appendix and uh, to physiology of appendix two lines you can write and uh, pathology it is means inflammation you know so inflammation of appendix is called appendicitis okay some two three features of inflammation you can write what are the features of uh, inflammation uh, seen okay and uh, uh, you know any inflammation you give it could be bacterial infection most of the time so for uh, bacterial you give some antibiotics so similarly make your uh, if you not read also don't go uh, like blank or uh, unanswered unattempted frame a uh, question from your uh, frame the answer from your previous knowledge whatever you have logically and uh, attempt it uh, uh, wisely okay so this is again a common mistakes uh, not attempting the question just because you are not read it and while presenting also your handwriting may not be very great but if you are uh, written a very neat legible uh, way that's very impressive for the examiner and uh, don't unnecessarily scribble or scratch the, in the answer sheet and uh, uh, every new question should be started from a fresh page and leave enough space between the side headings okay and uh, important always important words or uh, uh, sentence should be underlined or highlighted okay no need to use color pencils and all one pencil is more than enough wherever is possible all the examiners will tell you this okay write the flow charts neat label diagram as much as possible in surgery also okay uh, uh, put as many diagrams as possible schematic diagram is more than enough with the properly labeled ones okay this is the these are the common mistakes should be avoided uh, next coming to uh, practicals uh, coming to the practicals after the theory you will have three four days of gap maybe but i would suggest you to prepare once for the practical before the theory only once just go through the what is the syllabus is there what are the cases uh, what are the perform everything whenever you free like uh, a bit bored with the theory preparation you can concentrate one hour for practical as well okay so if you have idea fair idea what's happening in the practical those three four days you won't you wouldn't panic or uh, you would not have to rush uh, while studying so comfortably you can cover up whatever is there surgery practical is is very uh, simple and uh, there are hardly six seven cases major cases are there in uh, surgery but the beauty of surgery is whatever may irrespective of the case you need to know only two performers okay two clinical case performers that is one is uh, swelling second one is ulcer if you know these two case performers you can manage any case be it any case in surgery for example Uh, these are the seven major cases that is thyroid breast carcinoma stomach presenting as uh, gastric outlet obstruction and mass per abdomen like uh, pseudocyst of pancreas or right atrial fossa mass or hernia or hydrocele varicose veins uh, peripheral vascular disease all these are the most commonly kept or maybe parotid whatever oral cavity uh, malignancy these are the commonly kept exam cases whatever may be the case what is thyroid it's nothing but swelling breast lump swelling carcinoma stomach again is swelling mass per abdomen swelling hernia is a swelling hydrocele is a swelling varicose veins is again swelling of a vein or if it's present as a varicose ulcer then it's ulcer pvd can present as a gangrene it's an ulcer again okay so you need to know only swelling and ulcer performers if you know it properly what are the inspectory uh, uh, side readings what are the pal- under side readings under palpation uh, with which uh, we should uh, examine if you know one these two performers clearly uh, by heart then you can manage with any case okay just that there are some four five salient features or some four five extra points in each of these cases if you know that enough for example in thyroid thyroid there are some favorite viva questions are there 
okay uh, and uh, say for example why this thyroid moves with deglutition what are the other midline swellings uh, okay and uh, what is thyroid paradox some some viva questions are the favorite question that you should be uh, well versed and uh, about breast what's more important breast is the different positions in which you examine hands uh, by the side hands uh, above your head uh, hands uh, pressing against the hip bone to so the why why that you should know okay and uh, some of the uh, Term, term, terminologies are there, those definitions you should know. What is it? Uh, dimpling, puckering, tethering, and uh, other appearance. All those things, some technical terms are there, those definitions you should know. And uh, if you know that, uh, the best case is done. Carcinoma stomach, uh, just that it's all like any other swelling, two extra uh, uh, examination. Uh, that is succussion splash and uh, asphalt percussion. Those are only two salient features about this case. And hernia. Those five tests, five tests like uh, get above the swelling, uh, cough impulse, and uh, deep ring occlusion, Zeeman's test, and finger imagination. These five tests for hydrocele and hernia. If you know, uh, that's done, hernia cases done, varicose veins also. There's uh, uh, four or five special tests are there that you need, need to know. Peripheral vascular disease, just like an ulcer, uh, and uh, only signs of ischemia you should be knowing, and how to differentiate between an arterial, venous, and neuropathic ulcer. If you know this much, see any surgical case, you can. Uh, 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 easily deal with. Okay, so proforma, these two proformas uh, be thorough with and uh, watch videos. What are the questions asked uh, uh, by the examiners? Uh, what are the favorite? Uh, how they? What do they expect you to answer and how to answer? Uh, all those things you will learn by uh, watching the uh, case presentations or uh, or prior case presentations. What you have done. Okay, uh, some of the common mistakes done uh, during practicals, I would like to tell in more detail, uh, especially in HOPI, history of presenting in less, mixing up positive and negative histories. No, first write all the positive histories first, and then to rule out one by one are some uh, negative uh, like uh, histories, okay? Don't mix up both, and uh, don't write nothing significant, especially in past or family history. Don't just write nothing significant. Write something. Okay, no history of any previous surgeries or uh, radiation or uh, uh, okay, any comorbidities you can write. Okay, in the family history also. Uh, any relevant uh, malignancies or any relevant familial conditions. Or if not anything, just like, uh, put a three generation pedigree chart. Okay, three uh, pedigree chart you can put. And whoever is deceased, you can just mention. This much is, at least this much you should write in family history. And uh, in ladies, menstrual history is a must. We tend to miss that and uh, uh, make a mistake. Uh, so don't miss that. And failure to take during examination, you must take uh, informed consent. Uh, and uh, in the exam, under undergraduate level, what you should be knowing is to demonstrate the simple clinical signs like uh, pale erectress, clubbing, lymphadenopathy. This is what expected. Most of the students will be stuck here only. Examiners also will be uh, giving more uh, time here only. Uh, before. Uh, not considering prerequisites before uh, particular tests. For example, uh, examiner will ask you to demonstrate clubbing. Okay. Even though you would have asked uh, the consent, explained everything before uh, when you did, when your examiner ask you to demonstrate, start from explaining to the patient only. See, I'm going to do this test now. Okay. Uh, if any come, uh, any inconvenience, please let me know. I'm going to, just checking if you have any bulges there in your finger. Please then you ask him to do this way. What are the signs? Uh, okay. So that will give you an impression to the examiner. Oh, okay, his approach is good. Huh? He's pro following proper uh, method. Yeah, okay. Uh, even for some prerequisites before doing the uh, examination, like for per abdomen palpation, uh, the patient must have emptied the uh, bladder, hands by the side of the patient must keep hands by the side of the body, legs and hip must be flexed. Uh, and uh, he, you must be looking at the patient face instead of uh, patient's abdomen while palpating and uh, correct order of palpation and uh, elevating his anxiety, all those things, prerequisites while palpating, you must take care of. And most of the thing, if the examiner is in hurry, instead of presenting entire case, he will just ask you, uh, tell the summary of your case. So then you need to be knowing only to tell the positive findings in your case, in which are in favor of a diagnosis. So you should be able to quickly summarize and uh, uh, tell the diagnosis. So if you are unable to summarize, then it will give a negative impression. And uh, don't give irrelevant or unnecessary differential diagnosis. Just because there is a swelling is that don't tell all the possible swelling as uh, differentials. 
okay you see if there is already a punctum is there or a swelling then it's a clear cut uh, uh, or it's a uh, sebaceous cyst it cannot be some dermoid or lipoma correct so if there is a swelling form swelling with the slip sign positive okay which is free from skin then it's a lipoma only it cannot be sebaceous cyst or uh, thing so don't give unnecessary differential like this uh, all the features uh, should be uh, very much relevant for that particular condition only then you can give it as a differential diagnosis okay not otherwise including irrelevant information that are not required or pertaining for example in a textbook or in a book a clinical book all the tests pertaining to the swelling would have been given okay under the in, in, in the pro forma but in the examination you should apply only those tests which are required in that particular case for example there is a, something called transillumination test for swellings correct but uh, you should know that this transillumination test is only for cystic swellings not also first you should check for consistency if the consistency turns out to be cystic only then you do transillumination test not for other swellings so so the examiner assess the uh, application of knowledge not just the knowledge okay so and uh, most uh, most commonly what we see the student doing is hurrying while answering without completely understanding or listening to the question uh, whatever asked they try to beat around the bush keep on explaining things uh, look here and there uh, and with the, all the hand gestures crying improper uh, body gestures and this will irritate the examiner okay they are very seasoned examiners very experienced they might have seen hundreds or thousands of students like us so we straight forward okay if you know please uh, tell the answer to the point if you don't know please admit that you don't know okay that will be uh, in fact uh, more impressive than uh, uh, just beating around the bush okay and uh, uh, what's more important is uh, manage the time judiciously during the case uh, like uh, kate taking you will get some 40 45 minutes of your uh, time so first uh, 20 minutes should be spent on taking history and simultaneously do the examination also while taking history only you can do the uh, that vital parameters or the gp and all you can do simultaneously and now come back next 20 minutes spend on writing a proper uh, case sheet without any contradictory okay otherwise what happens if you uh, do like uh, what's your name write down what's your age if you write down like that uh, the history wise it will be more of a respiratory case but uh, after examination you will come to know that it's a serious case then you can't uh, alter things so you cannot change the things okay so instead of that uh, after history and examination you will have a clear cut idea now this is the diagnosis i should uh, uh, not include these points which are contradictory to my case only the points which are in favor of a proper diagnosis only those things you include in your case sheet okay don't contradict yourself in the same case sheet so and uh, uh, so uh, it is advisable to write all together at once at the end of uh, at the end when we all know the, all the details of a case right differential diagnosis only if any and that to uh, features are correlating not otherwise and now when you come to present first thing what they see is your uh, humbleness your modesty and all okay so please greet the examiner when they when he examiner ask you to sit then sit uh, and uh, please ask the permission to present whatever is if you tell present then start the from the beginning if is what is your case then you tell only the diagnosis or tell the summary so whatever exam is asking just try to uh, answer that specifically okay just listen to him be attentive and present the case loudly clearly and confidently some keep mumbling uh, that's not good your accent and language skills are not checked but the how confidently you are presenting okay how boldly how clearly you are presenting that's what really matters answer specifically to the questions never try to explain or teach the examiners many have this okay uh, they try to explain the things uh, instead of uh, trying to specifically answer common causes should be told first don't try to show off your knowledge it's, it's always better to be elegant at submissive be humble if they tell uh, something listen to them don't go to argue it's a uh, if you don't answer also we may pass but if we argue with the examiners if you lie to them then uh, uh, there's a meek possibility that you will pass being rude or dishonest is like digging our own grave please don't do that it's not a crime in exam exams to admit i don't know if it all i don't know that's okay in fact exams will be happy with your frankness and truthfulness and uh, never ever hurry when questions are asked comprehend understand and then frame answer in your mind before saying it aloud no matter how many times apologize after saying wrong answers it's of no use so preventing is better than 
repenting and uh, i have seen uh, in many examination your attire itself speak for your attitudes okay so attire and etiquettes also counts let us be very decent and good if not great okay with our attire, uh, uh, etiquettes and attire carry all necessary items for examination keep everything ready beforehand to avoid last minute commotion okay so for example you know translation test you need to have that uh, translation scope that should be ready or else exam will ask okay you have done translation test where is your scope you don't have then how did you do the test uh, to do that uh, uh, what is it uh, varicosvein test you need to have a tourney case if you are not got then you may not be able to do the test okay so all these prerequisites are uh, are uh, whatever there keep them ready beforehand and carry to the examination hall uh, and uh, be uh, practice this test reflexes and uh, roommates we know that you have three four days uh, before the practicals okay practice that for abdomen examination palpation reflexes uh, how to demonstrate mutually on or on your friends so that uh, you can keep discussing and uh, you will have a practice also directly doing on the exam day over the patient will be difficult okay you will suddenly go and stand on the left side and start doing something uh, in that when, when you are really anxious so in, if you are practiced on your roommates or parents or friends uh, beforehand and if you have discussed what the correct way and what the wrong methods then on exam day you will be very confident and uh, uh, very cool and composed manner you will be presenting or demonstrating to the examiner that would be good so be cool and composed and focused tension and anxiety may cause thought block and whatever to viva okay how to face viva how to face viva in viva there will be mainly four stations correct four stations will be there first thing is uh, instruments instruments second thing is uh, radiographs x ray mostly x ray radiograph radiographs third thing is specimens fourth thing is operative procedures right operative steps now each uh, station in each uh, each category you have to answer under four headings i'll make it simple for you okay for example any instruments you will answer under four headings any instrument first you have to identify identify the instrument okay second thing what are the parts of an instrument what are the parts you should be able to uh, um, mention the parts third thing is what are the uses what are the uses of that particular then fourth one is how to sterilize sterilize the instrument these four you need directly and while uh, identifying identifying uh, uh, tell the full name of that instrument for example some people tell what is this it's a forceps it's a back box forceps or it's foley's catheter no tell the full name it's a two way self retaining foley's rubber catheter then your entire no okay, exam need not ask you any further question at all this is a uh, back box atrium atraumatic tissue forceps see in the identification only you have told the full correct answer then uh, what type of uh, forceps it's traumatic or atraumatic uh, need not ask any further questions on that then coming to the uses a parts any instrument will have three four parts that you need to tell and uses tell the most important common uses first okay then how to sterilize this for under any when you reading also under these four uh, side headings you read it will be easy to answer radiographs also you should answer under four headings okay four side heading first thing is should be able to tell the site site or like this is a chest radiograph x ray or it's a it's a x ray of a chest and upper abdomen of the x ray of the abdomen and pelvis okay that's the thing. then you can include that is a plain x ray or a contrast x ray uh, second thing is any technical issues when it's well centered or not any rotation is there any uh, wo, wo, like uh, it's a over uh, exposed or under exposed all those things any technicality you can comment under the second thing so first thing is the site what is the okay second thing is uh, technical aspects third thing is interpretation third point interpretation now that you will tell uh, here all the interpretation this uh, airways is uh, appears to be normal bones appears to be normal cardiac silo uh, silo appears to be normal uh, okay so in that uh, from outside to inside there are so many techniques how to interpret in chest x ray that you should know and uh, don't directly conclude okay this is a chest x ray showing a uh, air under diaphragm no that's not the way you have to interpret and then the fourth point is the inference inference okay by all these thing finally i can see there is a um, whatever gas under the diaphragm is there then tell if they ask what are the causes for gas under diaphragm air under the diaphragm then tell what the uh, six seven point air under causes for air under diaphragm that's all 
So you should always uh, do the interpretation under these four uh, headings. Coming to specimen also. Specimen first, uh, identify the specimen, then tell the identifying features. What are the features of that specimen? Third thing uh, about that uh, organ or the thing, whatever the description, whatever you know, you can tell. So for operative steps also, before starting, first tell them any indications are there, indications for the for that surgery. Second thing, you can tell the steps. Third thing, any uh, complications related to that uh, operation, you can tell. Okay. So most of times in Viva, what happens is they'll give you an option to pick up any instrument. Okay. Uh, tell anyone surgery which you have seen. Okay. Uh, pick up anyone radiograph. So uh, from our set of uh, radiographs in our college or instrument, we should be thorough with any two, three instruments, two, three radiographs, or two specimens and two operative. Okay. Uh, it should be not very easy or not too tough. The medium ones you should select and keep ready. Okay, when given such options, you should be confident able to answer everything in one go. Okay, once you have chosen, then there is no excuse. You should be able to tell everything about that. If the exam only ask, if you don't answer, okay. But if you have selected, then you should be able to answer. Then you can't make any mistakes. Okay, so why is uh, definitely going to be very easy? Already those twenty marks already there in your pocket uh, if you prepared this much. Okay, so that's easy marks, easy, easily uh, fetchable. So prepare well for this. And uh, uh, the last thing is uh, my final advice uh, for uh, any exam, uh, final exam is, see, uh, it's very difficult to fail, uh, in a, especially in a fourth year examination. Uh, uh, very difficult because you have the knowledge of so many, uh, now 12, 13 subjects now, okay? So if you don't know anything else, you can write something. Okay. So you'll theory anyway, you'll pass if, with uh, attempting the, if you attempted all the questions, see getting 50 mark is not at all difficult in 10, uh, 10 marker question. If you attempted something means minimum five marks, you'll get, okay. In a three marker, something if you've written one and a half, you'll get. So 50 marks of the 50% of the marks if any, you'll anyway get if you attempt all the questions. So 50, you already got in your pocket and to score more, you have to write more. Okay. That's it. That about the theory. Uh, only mistakes keep in mind is time management, time management and attempting all the questions in theory In the practicals only that definite uh, some six, seven per cases are there. not very difficult, not so difficult. Only your approach is um, seen, not the final diagnosis or so management part and all. If your approach is correct, if uh, whether taken proper history and elicited all the uh, science properly, then you are through. Okay. And you are through uh, exam is asking some tough questions means that you already, he has already assessed you and he already passed you and uh, you're doing well. That's why he's asking more questions, tough questions. Don't worry if you know answer or if you don't know, don't try to complicate things. Instead, please humbly tell, sir, I don't know. Uh, Madam, I don't know. Sorry. Okay. That's it. Be humble. And in Viva also, see Viva 20 marks already in your pocket. Okay. Uh, most of things, uh, most of times it will be optional to you. So be prepared for this also. Uh, so if you have any doubts uh, regarding further examination preparation, uh, any particular doubts uh, with related to any topics, we can uh, post it in the chat section. I'll try to answer them. Uh, also, I'll try to get the uh, seasoned examiner's opinion uh, also on them. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, wishing all the success.